All right, we're going to talk a little bit about how to set up Flask models utilizing uh, SQL Alchemy in Flask. Uh, so I have a very simple application set up here with a movie class defined, director, actor, and some guild memberships. But right now, our director is just a string. We can see that by the use of that db.column string. Um, and I don't want to have to look those things up. So as we're looking through here, I've got a single route, doesn't really matter, it's just returning hello world, but I'm utilizing Flask CLI commands to allow me to manage my database. The CLI commands are really good for administrative functions. So I have one that just kind of resets the database, it drops all the tables that are in the database and creates new ones. My other one, this bootstrap command, uh, when I'm developing, and I, especially if I'm changing model properties and things like that, I like to have something that's going to build all of my models, populate the database with some sample data to ensure that everything is going to be working and uh, persisting how I think it should be persisting. Um, so here I have the ability to add a movie um, and it's got my director, my actors, and then I add the director, I add some actors, I commit it, and we're going to have that. Let me delete this database here, and I will start that one from scratch. Um, I do have my commands set up inside of um, Visual Studio Code, just allows me some convenience functions to run those. Uh, so I'm going to be running my flask init command that's going to set up my database. So it runs through here, we set it up, and it should be done now. All right, so now if I go back, I look, I see I've got a movies database. Um, if I look, use my SQLite Explorer, I can look at a table. So for example, I can show my movie, and I have no results, because all I did was run the initialization. Um, so it's not populated with any data. At this point, I'm gonna run the bootstrap one. And this is just to show the difference. From now on, I'll just be using my bootstrap uh, command in order to populate my database as it goes. Um, so let's go back to our, we're gonna refresh our database. I'm gonna go and look at my movie. And we see, okay, I have a movie. It's keeping a title, the director's name, the release date a comma delimited list of actors so that I can pull those out, split the string on the comma, that kind of stuff. From the standpoint of a model though, having a comma delimited list of actors is not super helpful or having just a director's name, not really helpful for a database. That director may have a lot more information. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off working with, and let me get rid of these. Um, we're gonna start off converting our director relationship from a string to a one to many relationship. So I have a director and a director has many movies. So the one in that cordinality relationship uh, is going to be the director. From the standpoint of defining a one to many relationship, you wanna put the uh, relationship, define that relationship on the uh, one uh, object. And um, so let's let's do that. So director can have many movies. So I'm gonna create a property on my director's class called movies, and that's gonna be equal to db.relationship. And with Flask SQL Alchemy, or with SQL Alchemy, the relationship is what's going to define uh, that I have another model out there that this object or this property on this object is related to. So I'm going to say that I am related to uh, movie and I get that from the name of the class here. I put that name in as a string uh, and SQL Alchemy will process that behind the scenes and relate the data in that property to the data um, in the table movie. So uh, the next thing that I have to do is to determine and I'm just, just to make this readable I'm going to hit enter here. I need to determine how is uh, the movie class going to refer back to a director class from the movie object. So if I if I query the database and get a movie instance and I say movie dot bleh, what property do I want to attach to the movie class that will represent a director? Um, from the standpoint of convention, I am just going to say director. 
So this means if I have a movie instance and I say movie.director, what will be returned is the object of the director from the database. Uh, this will allow me to uh, not have to do a bunch of complicated uh, lookups saying, okay, movie, get me the director ID that's related to it. Now go and query the director table separately. SQL Alchemy is going to take care of all of that for me. Uh, and the last one is a lazy property. Uh, I am just going to stick with the default select for now. Um, I'm, the, the lazy properties are a little bit outside of scope right now. So we're going to stick with the default select. Um, and yeah, so there we go. So we've defined half that relationship. We've defined that a director has many movies, but we still have the issue where, all right, well, the movie still doesn't refer to the director right now. So since I've got this director string, I'm going to change that to say, well, I'm going to store the director's ID here. And that's going to be an integer. And in that integer, I can take that out and comma. And then the other piece of information this is going to need is it needs to know what is the foreign key that's going to relate to. What is the table? What is the attribute that we would like to relate as the foreign key in the database to maintain that relationship? So SQL Alchemy provides a nice, easy way to establish that. I'm just going to pass in foreign key. And then again, I go into a, uh, a string and I'm going to say director dot ID. And this is telling SQL Alchemy, use the director table and the ID field, the ID column from the director table as the uh, foreign key to relate these things. And then director table, we can see that ID is the primary key of that table. So at this point, this gives me the uh, capability to create and instantiate my objects differently. So if I look at my bootstrap script, I've still got this director. Well, I don't need that anymore because it's not a string anymore. That director property is a pointer at the director object or the director table. So I can delete that property and I'm going to change where I'm adding this a little bit where I'm going to say D equals. And instead of just creating this right here, I'm going to cut that out, put it up here and add that to the database as an object. Um, once that's added, I can now, oh, well, we also are going to want a handle on the movie for the rest of this example. So let's just pop this open. We're going to say M equals, and I'm going to cut that out, put that right there. And we are going to add the, uh, the movie right here. And since I've got that, now that I've got a movie, I can say, D dot uh, movies, see it's a property there, dot append M. And since it's set up as a Flask relationship, I can use this as a list, a native Python object. So I can work with all of the same utilities I would use within a list to append, extend, um, concatenate, and put things together, slice and dice and all that kind of lovely stuff. I now have the capability built in to that relationship where I can work with those as Python objects. It vastly speeds up the ability to develop with related models when you're able to use an ORM or an object relational mapper to set up those relationships so they work nicely. Uh, now, if I come in here, I'm going to save this. I'm going to rerun my bootstrap. So when that runs this time, and it is going there. There we go. I'm going to refresh. All right, thanks for that. I'm going to refresh my SQLite and let's look at my table. So now instead of having a, a director's name, I now have a director ID, which means that when I'm doing this, now I can say movie.director.first name. So I don't have to store all the information about the director in the movie. I just store a reference to the director in that movie object. And it's going to persist that into the database and manage all those SQL queries um, behind the scenes for us. All right, so that is a one to many. Um, if I wanted to create a one to one relationship, and I'm going to do that with the director to guild. So every director is going to have a one to one guild membership. Um, I'm going to define that relationship. It's going to look very similar. So I can come in here and I'm going to say, all right, uh, guild is going to be another db.relationship. 
And instead of relating to movie, I would like to relate to my class guild membership. And my back ref is going to, again, be director because I'm putting this back reference onto the guild object. So when the guild objects are created, then I'm able to utilize um, the, I, when I have an instance of a guild object, I can say guild dot director and it's going to return that director for me. Uh, and again, just sticking, sticking with a, a default lazy uh, property here. Now the one difference between a one to many and a many to many is that the one to many you set an additional property called use list uh, with one L and that's going to equal false. And again, to make this a little bit more readable, let's bring that down here. All right, so now I have this guild membership with on the related object, it's gonna put a back reference to back to the director object. It's gonna use select uh, SQL statement to get that. And the use list is saying, instead of storing this as a list of objects, this is gonna maintain a one-to-one -one mapping. So if you need to have a one-to-one -one mapping between a certain object and another object, you do that by just adding use list equals false. And now we have that one-to-one -one mapping. Um, likewise though, I still need to put in my director ID here to maintain that relationship in the database. So we're gonna say db.column. Uh, db dot uh, integer and we also need to say that this is going to be a foreign key as well that is going to point at our director table excuse me dot ID and now I've got again this new guild membership and it's going to maintain that so if I come down here and I've got a guild let's add a guild object here in fact Let's just say, um, yeah, let's say guild equals uh, guild membership. And we're going to say guild, that's the name of the property, is going to be the Ramey uh, DGA. This is not a great model of the Director's Guild of America, but uh, we, we have that and Actually, I think that's going to be the only thing I need to put in there. That is correct, because it's going to maintain, it's going to handle the uh, director entirely. Um, and let's add that to our database. So db.session.add uh, guild. And with our director, since we're changing the director and we're adding that relationship here, I can also say d.guild equals guild. So because I can work with these objects, I just assign that property to the object and SQL Alchemy takes care of maintaining all the foreign key relationships behind the scenes so I don't have to. Um, so let's run our bootstrap again here. And there we go. And we are a done. All right, so let's refresh that we look at our director, or we have to look at our guild membership to see that. If I show that table, now I see that, okay, I do have one guild set up here. It's the Raimi DGA, and that maps to the director number one, which is Sam Raimi. Uh, so that's a useful way to set up a one-to-one -one relationship. Now, the many-to-many -many relationships are slightly different. So we, those, because they're many-to-many, are going to require what's called a join table. So you cannot set it up where you have a relationship on one object and an ID stored in the table because you'd only be able to store a single ID in that table with the related objects. So we need something where we can store an ID of one object and an ID of the related object and maintain uh, multiple objects can relate to multiple other objects. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do that between actors and movies. Um, so before I utilize this join table, I need to define it. So here we're going to say that actors is going to be a table. So we just create a generic table. It's not mapped to an object. Its sole purpose is to maintain the relationship between movies and actors. So we've got this. I'm going to call it um, actors, and I could even call it actors movies so that I know what the join table is doing. <clears throat> 
So this actors and movies table, join table, is going to have two columns. It needs a column for the ID of the actor. It needs a column for the ID of the movie. Uh, so I'm just going to create those columns as I would in another model. So here I go. Uh, column is going to be actor ID. Then it is going to be of type DB integer. And it is also going to represent a foreign key. So I can come in here and say foreign key, and that is going to point at the actor table with the ID field as its foreign key. Now we do have another column, which is the movie ID, because we have to maintain the relationship between those. So I'm going to create another column. I'm going to call that movie ID and say db.integer because I know that my foreign key is of type int. And I need to set the foreign key again and set that to the movie table with column ID. And now I've got this actor's relationship that's being set up, or at least the join table for that relationship. In order to change this, which frankly a string, comma delimited string, if you're, it's not super helpful. So instead of saying that actors is this column, I'm going to say that it is a relationship. Uh, inside there I'm going to say what am I relating to so I'm relating to the actor table and I need this is where I'm going to define my secondary or the join table which is represented by the secondary argument and I map that argument to that table that I created above so this actors is that join table that I created and I'm referencing it there and then I need to set how do I refer back to the movies from the actors? And so that is going to be that back ref argument where I say um, movies. Because when I'm on an actor and I say dot blah, I want to be able to get back the fact that those are the movies. And it's an arbitrary string. It can be whatever you want. I find it very helpful to name it something that represents what you're working with. Uh, and then our lazy is again going to equal select. All right, so we've defined that relationship, but because we have that join table, we do not need the relationship to be set up on the actor table. This relationship exists, it's fine, it works. Uh, I am gonna remove this function that I no longer need. So there we go. And if I go down and I look at how I'm instantiating those objects, I'm adding a bunch of actors, but I want to be able to add those to that movie. So I'm going to pull all of these, whoops, I'm going to pull all of these out. There we go. And cut those out. And we are going to paste those right here. All right, and then I need uh, my actor's name. So I'm going to have Bruce equal that actor. I'm going to have Ellen equal that actor. We're going to have Hal equal that one. And Betsy whoop, is this one. And Sarah is that. All right, so now I just want to be able to add, oops, there we go. I'm going to put those into I'm just going to add those to the database right there. So now I'm going to go from my movie. I'm going to get my actors. And we have an example up here where I'm adding a movie to the director's list of movies. In that instance, I'm just extending it. But now I want to add all of these actors in one operation. I'm sorry, I'm appending that list. In this instance, I would like to extend it because that allows me to add more than one object at a single time. And that's just going to take a tuple of my actors. So I've got Bruce, I've got Ellen, I've got Hal, I've got uh, Betsy and Sarah. And so now when I commit this, I'm going to have that relationship with the actors to the movies. The movie is going to have more than one actors and actors can have more than one movie. So now if I go and I run my bootstrap code again, we're going to uh, check out our database when that run that finishes running. And oh, I forgot to take out this part. Whoops. So let's run that again. Uh, so I was maintaining instantiating the movie with the old string based um, movie actors list. 
Um, so it failed. Thank you. That's another way to help realize with these init commands where you may have some um, some data that is incorrect and it allows you to go in and find things as you're refactoring. Uh, it's kind of a simple unit test <laughs> or a poor man's unit test, I guess I should say there. All right, so here we go. We're going to run that again and it should be happier with us. Um, so there we go. Our data is set. If I go in, I'm going to refresh my database and I see that I've got this new actors and movies. If I look at that table, I can see that, oh, I've got actor ID one, two, three, four, five, and they are all related to movie ID. And when I go and I look at my movie, it does not have anything in the database that mentions the fact that there are actors because all of that information is maintained, excuse me, in the join table. The relationship is defined in my code with my object models and that allows me to just not worry about the database and how I'm managing all the SQL connections, but I'm able to maintain that with very simple dot access to all of these related objects, not just in terms of accessing them, in terms of appending them, relating them, adding new objects to those relations. So Flask SQL Alchemy uh, relationships are extremely powerful. Uh, this is a very simple example on how you can make use of the relationships.